Well, welcome to Burnt Factory United Methodist Church on this beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has prepared for us. I, I do welcome you in the name of our blessed Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. He is risen. We are still in the wonderful season of Easter where we proclaim the good news uh, everywhere we go. And I pray that it is good news for you today. Jesus Christ, our Lord, has defeated sin, has defeated death, and has promised all who claim his name uh, eternal and everlasting life. That is the good news today. Welcome to our services. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad that Tom Miller is here once again to lead us in worship, and I'm going to go ahead and invite him to come forward. Uh, we are glad you're here, and uh, we are uh, so excited uh, to be in worship together with you. As we continue to work through this pandemic, uh, we still give God all the glory. And Tom, if you'd come forward, God bless you, my friend. Already there. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, just one announcement today. I want to call your attention to the fact that the online basket auction for our Relay for Life is currently ongoing. It started last week, and it's going until the end of the month. There are baskets, beautiful homemade furniture from the members of our congregation, and many other items that you can bid on. I really strongly recommend you take a look. Uh, I believe that you can find it on our website on the internet. Uh, for further information, though, you can also contact Lisa Patterson, Teresa Gilbert, or Rob Moss. With the business of the church behind us, let us still the noise in our minds and open our hearts to the Lord in the opening prayer. God of promises, God of assurance, we invite you to our worship. We praise you for the apostles who were obedient to your call and for the disciples of today that proclaim the forgiveness and redemption found in your Son, Jesus Christ. Open your word to us and help us to receive your truth. Renew our spirits that we may be your witnesses to our family, our friends, our community, and to the world. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, we will join together in our traditional call to worship, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we have the pleasure of watching Layla Hall and Carrie Fair introduce the children's message, which will be brought to us by Carrie. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good morning, friends. And today is a special day in the life of our church. Little Phoenix Neff is getting baptized today. Yay! That is such an exciting thing that happens to us when we are Christians. Oh man, first of all, before we get into baptism a little bit, I want to play a little game with you. Oh, uh, let's see. We all recognize certain symbols in our church, right? So we know like the cross. What does that symbolize? Jesus' undying love for us. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, how about the fish? The fish also. Best fishy face. It is a symbol of being a Christian which means being a follower of Jesus Christ. That is a good one. 
Um, we also have other Christian symbols in the church like the dove that resembles the Holy Spirit or um, we all know the star. It represents um, the light of Jesus. Uh, there's so many uh, grapes and a piece of wheat represents the bread and the juice, which represents our communal meal that we have together to remember the Last Supper that Jesus had. But today we have one symbol in particular, the scallop shell. Ooh, why is this on the baptismal altar? Well, let me tell you, friends, the scallop shell was a way for the early Christians in the church it was a small enough shell, but held enough water because when they were secretly holding um, uh, services in the catacombs or when they were having home church, they would use this to baptize because um, they couldn't immerse into the water. So they would use these baptismal shells and they would put the water in it and they would pour it on the head to baptize. And so this became a symbol of baptism. So we even put those on our altar today to remember um, that it is a holy and special day when we baptize our children or adults in our uh, church. So today, guys, you know, these are all symbols of our faith. Um, but what might be a sign of our faith? That is the baptism. Yay! You guys are super smart today, right? So being baptized is this outward sign that we're telling the world that we are becoming the family of God. We choose to belong to God. Yes, Ugh. God has already chosen us and he's already loved us from the very beginning of our life. Now we tell the entire world that we are ready to accept that love and that family. We're ready to accept uh, and say yes to being part of God's family. Now that means, friends, that means that we are ready to be obedient to God. We are ready to follow his rules. We are ready to listen and learn from Jesus's teachings. And that also means that we will do our very, very, very super best to live our lives pleasing to God and to make Good choices, friends, good choices. That's all that God asks of us, you know? Now, before I pray this morning, I wanna do something fun with you guys. So I want you to pretend like you guys all have a scallop shell like I have here. I want you to put some water in there. Now, now, I want you to pretend like you're gonna pour it over your head. Ooh, feel the love of Jesus just drip on you and trickle down. Ooh, that feels so good, doesn't it? Ooh, get a little bit of Jesus this morning. Now shake like a dog. <laughs> you know, I had to throw that in there, right? You know, I had to. Okay, because it's fun. Awesome, friends. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, 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 you're the sweetest name I know. Pour out all of your love on these children today, Father God. Bless them and keep them all in your heart and in your hands. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer this morning. And it is in Jesus' name that we all pray. And all God's kids said, Amen. Mwah. Thank you so much. And our special music today is the wonderful hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, which will be sung by Carrie Reed and accompanied by Cindy Miller.
Friends, there seems that there was a man who had committed a terrible murder. And he wanted to try to get rid of the body, so he, he drug it outside. And he actually drug it through some, some wet cement. Well, he was caught and he was convicted easily. And you might ask why. Uh, and the reason is they had concrete evidence. Friends, there also was a, a woman who went uh, to a fortune teller, and she couldn't wait to get there and uh, wanted to have her fortune read. So uh, the lady looked into her crystal ball, and, and she became very shocked. She couldn't believe uh, what was revealed. And she said uh, to the lady, the very next full moon, your husband will be dead. And she said, for Pete's sakes, I already know that. I just want to know if I'm going to be convicted or not. <laughs> Friends, I want to speak to you today about conviction. Uh, conviction of the Holy Spirit. Uh, today's scripture uh, comes from the book of Acts. 
Uh, and it is about a conviction. So let me share with you from the second chapter. I'll be reading uh, verses 36 through 39. The title of the sermon is A Sign of Faith. But uh, listen now to the Word of God. Acts 2, 36 through 39. Therefore, Peter is speaking, Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, on this day of worship, this day you have set aside for your people to gather and to worship your name this day, we thank you for your word that is living in your Son, Jesus Christ, and also living in your holy word, the Bible. We give you praise for your word to us. Reveal it, we pray. Reveal your truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. As I said earlier, I want to speak to you about conviction, because Peter, in today's scripture, filled with the Holy Spirit has just finished a very powerful sermon. A sermon where he was convicting all of Israel of their guilt in condemning and executing Jesus. Once again, his last words of this historic sermon of what we call the New Church Age was this, let all of Israel be assured of this, that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when they heard this entire sermon that Peter had just given to them, when they realized their guilt, when the truth convinced them, when that light bulb came on and shined a light upon their complicity in the crucifixion of God's Son, in the killing of the Messiah, the Scripture says a very important thing. The Scripture says it was like being stabbed in the heart. Sometimes, friends, that's what can dictate conviction can do. It can make us feel like we've been cut to the heart, stabbed in the heart. Now, I'm pretty sure that the whole crowd was not convicted that day. I'm sure that many of them said, well, listen, uh, we don't believe all that. We're out of here. But if we read on, verse 41 confirms the effectiveness of Peter's great sermon. Luke writes this, he says, those who accepted his message, those who accepted Peter's message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000, maybe more, were baptized that day, repented of their sin, and received the forgiveness of their sins and the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And 3,000 were added to their number. And guess what? Today, today we are adding another one. Praise be to God to that number as we celebrate the baptism of Phoenix Oliver Neff this day. But friends, have you ever experienced where you thought you were absolutely right on a, a subject or on a situation or, or about a person? I mean where you just knew you made the right decision and then found out you were wrong. And that your decision 
Your judgment, your discernment was false and perhaps hurt others. Have you ever had that kind of conviction in your life? Ever been cut to the heart, as Luke says? The crowd that was convicted accepted that they had made a terrible mistake. And desperately now, they were looking for a way out. Looking for redemption. Well, you know, friends, there are some common sense principles of life that can uh, certainly make living in this world a lot easier. Only if we would just put them into practice. All kinds of things. For instance, if you open it, close it. If you unlock it, then lock it back up. If you break it, then admit it. If you borrow it, then return it. If you value it, then take care of it. If you mess it up, then clean it up. If you move it, put it back. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And for today, brothers and sisters, if we have sinned, if we have made a grievous mistake, and we are looking uh, to be redeemed and forgiven, then by all that is holy, the Bible says, admit it. Just admit it. Repent. Turn your life over to Jesus. And you'll be forgiven. If anyone wants to follow Christ, if anyone desires to be his disciple, if anyone wants to grab hold of the life that will give you complete joy and peace, a life that will give you purpose and meaning and direction, a life that will give you the tools that you need to live life to its fullest, then one must repent, admit their wrongdoing, be baptized. Now, Peter is saying that to follow Christ, two things. One must seek holiness of living. We must remove those things in our life that are harmful and not of God. And to turn away from a life concentrated upon self and then turn to a life dedicated to something better. Oh, yes, a life devoted to following Jesus in his teachings. You see, repentance is not just turning away from sin, it is turning to Jesus Christ. Now, secondly, Peter is also not saying that baptism is what saves us. Peter is saying to us that baptism is a sign act. It is a sign of faith. It is a sacrament that identifies us with Jesus and with his church. It is a condition of our discipleship, if you will, a sign of devotion to Jesus and his church. If we receive Jesus, Peter also says in this sermon, then we will also receive the Holy Spirit. And that, friends, is a promise, a promise that will affect generations to come. The Scripture says you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, what is this gift? What are these gifts? Let me turn to the 8th chapter of Romans first and, and share with you verses 5 through 6. Once again, hear God's Word. Paul's writing this, and he says, those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of a sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, law, nor can it do so. Paul's telling us that when we accept Jesus Christ, when the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts, then we can actually have the mind of Christ. Secondly, Let's turn to what the gifts of the Spirit are. Paul again writes in Galatians in the fifth chapter that these are characterized as fruit. Fruit of the Spirit living within us. 
What are those fruit? It is love. It is joy. It is peace. It is patience and kindness and goodness. It is faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. You see, friends, this is a great gift. If we desire the mind of Christ and to practice the attributes and the nature of Christ, if we want to, in our spirit, grow, then we must know Jesus. We must love Jesus. We must remember his teachings, his sacrifice, his compassion. But then we must imitate him. We must turn our life over to him. And brothers and sisters, this has nothing to do with us seeking to be a good person or being a good person. That will not get us into heaven. It never did and it never will. We are saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ, not by works, not by deeds. But hear this. By living by the fruit of the Spirit, by seeking the mind of Christ, we will then uh, be allowed to, to live on this earth. We will have the tools we need to live on this earth and live in a way that God desires us for, to live. A way in which we love God and love neighbor and seek to serve both with all that is within us. See, we get confused. It's a false and dangerous teaching to believe that we are somehow saved by being a good person or by living a life of good deeds and service. Because, friends, I got to tell you, we can be the most caring person in the world, the most wonderful serving heart that the world has ever seen. But if we have not surrendered our heart to Jesus Christ, then we are still imprisoned. Imprisoned in a life of perpetual misery, unable or unwilling to tap into the life-saving and life-giving and joy-filled life that God wants us to have. Trapped in a life where we constantly seek approval and control, where we constantly want acceptance, where we find our self-worth in what we do and in what we achieve and in what we accumulate instead of in who we are and more importantly, Whose we are. We can't fake it. We can't fool God. Repent and be baptized, Peter said in his sermon, and guess what? You will receive the gift of the Spirit. In other words, we seek to be like Christ first. We seek the Holy Spirit first, and then the good person that God empowers us to be will become evidence now in how we live. So let me say this, we can fool fool ourselves and perhaps overlook some very simple realities if we're not careful. We can fool others, but only for a while. In other words, an apple tree, an apple tree, friends, can only produce apples because, uh, sorry for the pun, because that is what is in its core. If we are to truly seek the mind of Christ, if we are to truly seek the fruits of the Spirit, to live as Christ would have us to live, if we are dealing with unresolved anger that is still in our core, if we have not dealt with it, it will eventually come to the top and explode. The same can be said of jealousy, of depression, of fear, of low self-esteem, and so many other things we battle against in this culture. Many of us will miss the grace-filled, the abundant grace-filled life that Jesus has for us because we haven't taken an honest look at our spiritual core. We miss the outpouring of the Holy Spirit because we still have unresolved sin blocking our way to Christ. And when that happens in our life, we tend to find fault with everyone and everything, and we tend to blame others for our misery. Peter has challenged the people of God to take a serious look at their core. Peter has convicted God's people that their core may need some attention. Because here's the truth. 
It is because of their anger and their fear and their jealousy and their mistrust and their self-righteous blindness. It is because of all of that that led Jesus' own people, the people of God, to conspire with the Romans to crucify the Son of the living God, the Savior of the whole world. And that's why Peter preaches, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. Friends, if you're struggling today, if you're struggling today, then perhaps it's time to take a deep look into your soul. Take an inventory. I have to do it every so often. What needs to be removed? What needs to be rebuked and cast out? What toxic emotion or practice or habit or pattern of living, or person for that matter, do you need to remove from having power in your life? And then ask yourself, then what do I need to embrace? And perhaps more to the point, who do I need to embrace or perhaps rediscover? Friends, the Abundant spiritual life awaits all who would be courageous enough to grab hold of it. Courageous enough to surrender their hearts to Jesus Christ. Friends, let me remind you that today, uh, you know, life is a journey. It's filled with ups and downs. It's filled with taking three steps forward and a step back. Uh, But it's not a journey that we are on by ourselves. God is always going to protect and guide our steps. And sometimes this journey of life, we need to be encouraged, helped, and even pulled along. And sometimes on this journey, we we need to be helping other people. Sometimes on this journey, we need to endure and push through the pain. Sometimes on this journey, we need to be the ones who push others. Sometimes on this journey, we need to be convicted. Sometimes on this journey, we need to repent once again and turn toward Jesus once again and start over. But all the time, not just sometimes, we need to recognize our constant and loving companion on our journey. Because Jesus is always with us. When we begin our journey with the Lord, through our surrender to His will, through our identification with the church, through our baptisms, through our repentance, once we truly give in to him, God will take over, will mold us, will shape us and transform us, will empower and equip us and lead us into our destiny, a destiny that is grounded in the love of God and in the love of neighbor, a destiny that leads us to eternal life, a life of joy and peace found in heaven and on earth that will surpass our human understanding. Friends, the Easter proclamation is true. It is absolute truth for the Christian. There is no true purpose or true peace to life without Christ. There is no true meaning or true joy to life without Christ. There is no true direction, no compass, or hope to life without Christ. What shall we do, the people yell. 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this promise is for you and also for your children and for all who are far off. Indeed, it is for all whom the Lord our God will call. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we do give you praise this day. We thank you that we can begin again. We thank you that you are always with us on life's journey and that you will always equip and enable the called. We thank you, Lord, for this truth of Easter, that you were never forsaken us. And we have ahead of us the promise of the gift of the Spirit, and the promise of everlasting and eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And friends, as we transition over to our closing time of prayer, I'd I do want to share some joys with you, and our Relay for Life team uh, has been working very hard, uh, and it was a great joy, our spaghetti dinner, uh, and also, as Tom announced, the, the basket auction is continuing on. All of this is for a tremendous cause as we try to stamp out uh, the scourge of cancer. I also want to just personally thank you for all the wonderful birthday uh, cards and well wishes, and uh, I'm truly humbled at the uh, amount of, of cards I received and all the, all the good wishes. Uh, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, the only birthdays I know of this week, there may be others, but uh, Jason Corin and Jody Dorsey have birthdays. Uh, Jason, I uh, think, got married on his birthday as well. So Jason and Kaylin are celebrating an anniversary. Uh, as are Dave and Martha Poole celebrating this week their anniversary. So we celebrate with all of those. Diana Smith is still recuperating from surgery, as is David Werdeball. We continue to pray for Mike Young's family and for the Everhart family. We continue to pray for the Moss family and especially for Debbie. We pray for Walt Cunningham. And also, uh, Kathy Hunt has Lifted up a friend of hers, David Eat or David Elton. David Elton, uh, we pray for him and all of his family as he is struggling a very difficult case of COVID. Also, we want to pray for Mark Lentz. Mark is having has had a procedure and he will be having another procedure this week on Tuesday. And uh, please keep Mark Lentz in your prayers. With that, friends, wherever you're at today. Let us bow our heads together and let us pray. Lord of truth and justice, you go before us in this world to guide us and direct us. But so many times we want to go our own way and ignore the way that leads to peace and unity. Lord of truth and justice, you convict us of our wrongdoing, but do not leave us orphaned or forsaken. You do not shame us by telling us we are wrong, but you do shame us in love and in correction by simply pointing out our disappointment. Lord, save us from ourselves and our mistakes. Save us from our poor decisions. Convict us and set us on the path of recovery and wholeness. Praise be to God. You will restore us. You promise us that. You renew us. You forgive us. You redeem us, Lord, and you set us free by the gift and by the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So let us empower us, Lord, if you will. Let us live by our baptismal covenant, let us take it seriously and let us seek to live in a way that you would be pleased with. 
Give us the power to love as you would love, to forgive as you would forgive, and to seek holiness of living as you would want us to, and to come and worship you as our Lord. So holy and awesome God, hear our prayer this day for all those who suffer. Hear our prayer for all those who are in need. Comfort them for all who mourn. Bring them solace. For all who are blinded by sin, help them recover their sight. For all those who have any need this day, let your presence be known. Let your healing be poured out upon them all. We pray this today, almighty and most merciful God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, once again, thank you for tuning in and for this time of worship. As we continue to navigate through these difficult days, uh, I believe that the light is at the end of the tunnel, uh, and we are seeing more and more people with vaccinations coming back into God's house. Uh, but we want to make sure everyone is safe. We want to make sure everyone uh, needs to do what they need to do to stay safe. So we will continue uh, to worship in all the different ways we can to stay connected to one another. And now, friends, may this Sabbath be a wonderful day for you, a day of peace and rest. And may the Lord our God bless you and keep you this day. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious. May he lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And may you experience the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.